Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. I'm Samurai Snake. And I'm Volcomar. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of the misadventures of Tron Bon. Much like with Shatty Dims at the start of the year, this is another one of those fancy, nay, legendary revived playthroughs. But while sh we got pretty much all the way through Shattered Dimensions, Tron Bon didn't survive more than a few parts or so. I think I did it with IR Tundra Boy, but it's been so long since we actually recorded those parts, I have no idea at this point. This uh, run was recorded for us by good old Snake here. So, um, Snake, explain to us what's the deal with Tron Bon. I know it's like a spin-off of uh, the Mega Man Legends games, but besides that, what is the deal with the Bond family? They're a rip-off of Gru and the Minions from Despicable Me. <laughs> <laughs> With the Lego license attached to them. They're such a rip-off, it rippled back through time. Yeah, because th it's totally possible to rip off something that won't be released in, like, let's, it, like six years in the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, this is a spin-off in the Mega Man Legends series, mm -hmm. and I want to believe that that's the reason why this game didn't do very well, because the Mega Man Legends series changed so much about yeah, Mega yeah. Man that it turned a lot of its core audience off of it, and that's probably the reason why Tron Bond did didn't do very well. It's a shame, because it's a really enjoyable game. It's one of my favorite PS1 tiles, and uh, I think that's mostly down to the variety of the whole package, because you've got, like, the third-person shooting in the robot here. Uh, you've got stuff like doing puzzles, um, yeah, ca exploring through caves, uh. like, you know, dungeon crawling, basically. Yeah, I heard that. We'll get to that later. And um, you've even got, like, a virtual pet aspect with the, uh, the serve bots here, which you may have seen in other Capcom games. It's just... Really fun, honestly. What do you think about it, Snow? You're right, it's very Virtual Pet-esque, uh, but it gets even more Virtual Pet-esque if you have the Japanese version, because that version of the game has Pocket Station support. Re anyone remember that? Oh, is it like the VMU on the Dreamcast? Yeah, it's a, it was this device that's essentially Sony's version of the Dreamcast VMU. And uh, basically, you could send, like, three serve bots in, into your little pocket station and play and a play uh, four mini games two of which were unlockable nice i do vaguely remember that because they had it for final fantasy VIII as well the chickabos oh yeah it was a nifty little device but i don't think it saw much use aside from this and final fantasy 8 oh my god i love this fame <laughs> Yeah, it, it's been you've been sitting on this theme for quite quite a while for the like the past few weeks. Yeah, yeah, this is Nakai Desert, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's a really awesome track. All right, explain to us how this robot works. Here, is this the goose stuff or is that the ship? This is the goose stuff. It's basically a giant robot, and if you chose the first two control options at at the beginning of the game from game start you'll get the exact same controls as Mega Man Legends. Ah. Basically, left and right strafes, the shoulder buttons look around, you press up to move forward, and you press the square button to fire, and X to jump. Okay. It controls kind of like um, some of the Armored Core games I used to play way back, where you can use the shoulder buttons to steer yourself, rather than having to sort of move forward and then move your thumb across left and right as well at the same time. It's just a lot less fiddly. I gotta say, like, right off the bat, the thing that strikes me the most about the Gustav here is the buster on his arm. Yeah. Very akin to the Mega Buster, although it can get upgraded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the upgrades depend on your ser on your sniper serve bot's abilities, and it it's nothing like Mega Man Legends where you can just buy parts and upgrade it. I, I gotta say, I like emulated the first Mega Man Legends ones just to like try it out because I'd, I'd heard like somewhat good things about it, and uh, it's kind of boring, honestly. But maybe that's just because I hadn't played more than half an hour. I think it's one of those games where you have to give it a fair shot, or it's just a case of that kind of genre of game maybe just isn't your thing. It's like one of those things where your mind about it is made up very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, because Mega Man Legends is essentially a sandboxy kind of game. Mm. And uh, whereas this kind of game is uh, very linear in its variety. 
like it has management aspects, but it is linear to the point where there's not really much management you have to do. You just have to make sure you have this amount of cash by the time you sort of get to finishing the rest of the levels. So, Snake, when did you first play Trombone? I'm assuming you played it on the you know the original console, the PS One, because you're uh, you're you're recording the PSN version here, aren't you? Um, th- no, this is this is recorded from an actual copy running uh, on my PlayStation 3, because I wanted to do something nice. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, it looks like Ed Tom's wrong again! Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but uh, this game actually has had a lot of emulation problems on uh, Windows emulators. Oh, yeah. And, like, like uh, when there was a certain point of dialogue, the game would freeze up, and I'm guessing it's probably because of how the game was programmed or something. I don't really know that much about emulation, so... You're talking to someone who doesn't really know his crap. <laughs> well, you're kind of the Mega Man guy of the group, because... Uh, yeah, pretty much. B- before we started, like, doing this playthrough, you had done, like, Mega Man runs way, way back that weren't really affiliated with HFC all that much. In fact, I think that's how we came to know of you in the first place, wasn't it? Yeah. I did my own little uh, play playthrough of Mega Man Legends and also um, and, and also Mega Man One. I really really liked that. Mm, yeah. And uh, I I really really liked that run because uh, I kind I kind of take uh, take to Proton John's way of uh, recording Let's Plays, kind of uh, where where you're all where it's kind of done live, but you also have some sort of knowledge about the game beforehand. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that you miss if you uh, stall on the title screen is that you get a cutscene that gives you more more information about the story of the game, uh-huh. and that in case you were too lazy to read the game manual, uh. and I can sum it up in two concise sentences. Go for it. <clears throat> he clears his throat. <laughs> Uh, the Bond Pirate family has completed their mothership, the Gessel Shaft, and has taken off to Ryeship Island in search for Diana's Tear, the biggest refractor in the world valued at 1 million zenny. Teasel Bond is leading the expedition and tells Tron to kick back, relax, and make him a sandwich for when he gets back. The end. <laughs> what a good older brother. Is he the older or the younger brother? He's the older brother. He's t- he's uh, 29. Ah, uh, okay. Wasn't there some to do with Teasel's original voice actor and they had trouble, like, putting it on PSN or whatever? I don't think it... I don't know. I I, I don't think it was that. I think that the thing behind it is that Mega Man Legends uses a lot of, uh... Let's say a lot a lot of, uh... A lot of product placement. Uh, like Like, okay. there was... That like there was Coke, I think, and then some other Japanese drink or soda or whatever, and uh, it required. And the reason why that game is expensive is because it they need to pay for licensing. Okay. Well, maybe someone in the comments can correct me. But there was also uh, something that I found in researching a while back is because uh, the localization of this was outsourced and not done directly by Capcom. So all digital rights had to be renegotiated, probably. I gotta say, I, I do love the voice work in this game because it's uh, so like cheesily nineties. It's, it's very good compared compared to let let's say other other Capcom uh, past voice acting, like the legendary bad Resident Evil to Mega Man Eight with. with with Doctor Why, we uh, what you're doing, Mega Man? Doctor <laughs> Wily is coming to do the robot thing. So, plot twist: uh, apparent, apparently, Teasel borrowed a bunch of money and has to pay it back to a loan shark called Lex Loth. Oh, Teasel, you completed a fuck up. I love these guys, the bird bots. Yeah, they're they're a great contrast to the serve bots. And uh, how the serve bots are n- not very bright but nice, and the bird bots are are just uh, an extremely intelligent, competent, and, and but they're very mean. Yeah, they're just pricks, really. They're no pretties, I can tell you that much. They're what? 
Prinnies from this guy, which in my opinion are the best birdcase psychic in any video game. Oh, Prinnies! I thought you were saying pretty. Yeah, I th- I heard you say pretty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably my fault. Sweet anime style jump. Hell yeah, motherfucker! I don't even I don't <laughs> even need to look where I land. Okay. The most awkward somersault I've ever seen. I'm just gonna jump with my arms crossed. All right, mate. Who are we up against here? Who's this little fella? We're up against Glide in his transforming mech, which is a bird. If Hell Dragon were here, he would be orgasming profusely right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, Glide. Really, is that his christened name, or did he just take it when he started piloting a bird butt? I would like to hope the latter, but for all we know, it's probably the former. I think his mother just was just like. You know what, I hang Glide a lot, so we're just gonna call you Glide. Oh, brilliant. Man, I would have asked you for some boss tactics, but you killed him before I got a chance to. Yeah, basically circle strafing is is the way to go for uh, such a boss like this. Yeah, most of the game, actually, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah, pr- pretty much. Like, at least for, like, all the action uh, stage bosses. TM. That is not a creative uh, weapon at all. That's not a creative name at all. Well, it doesn't need to be creative. It just needs to be devastating. <laughs> Call it the wrecker of shit laser, but I think it would lose its age rating if it did that. So the cutscenes are pretty. Uh, unique to this game that they're very visual novel uh. because uh, everyone in th- has their own model except Tron. Tron is just represented by a 2D image. I actually never noticed and the thought of it never occurred to me whilst I was playing this game and now that you say it I was just like, you're right. Oh my god, Snake is fucking right. <laughs> Well, so we're on Operation Rescue Teasel now. Exactly. I would ask why older siblings always have to be fuck offs, but I'm not really one to talk. No, not the wee Lego men! They got wrecked by the Ultimate Glide Laser trademark. Yeah, you gotta pay them a royalty every time you say it. Oh, the surfboards are so cute! Yeah, they're, they're extremely adorable, and that's that's pretty much why Capcom is like constantly use them in marketing, even though they they have some sort of a strange relationship with the Legends series. No, the funniest one has always been in Dead Rising, where you just take one of the servos head, put it on a zombie, job done. <laughs> well, one of the better moments of that game from help here, I think. And there's also the triple servbot team in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the best team. I ah, so. and Tron Bon herself in Marvel's Capcom 3. Oh, yeah. She was pretty decent. I quite enjoyed playing as her, but I can never get used to her, so in the end I just went with Zero. Ugh, the days of me going to arcades on my lunch break in school and playing Marvel's Capcom 2. Good times. Alright, guys, that'll do it for the intro of Tron Bon. We'll see you next time for another Servbot-filled part. Bye for now.